Hello guys, this is Jonathan Munoz and I'm gonna be your preceptor, your host in this mini course. And today we're going to talk about the uh, professionalism aspect of residency and how are you gonna be evaluated and how is this important and impactful for IMGs. So why is this important? Why? Because you may be at disadvantage by not knowing these little things, which seem seems something that you should know, everyone should know, but if you're not told what is specifics of this, then, then, then that may be the problem. So American residents, they know about this. They know about this, why? Because they had rotations on their third years, four years, and they saw who got in trouble, who got in trouble for joking about certain things, for uh, touching someone, even if it was in a friendly way, for um, having a rude behavior, for coming in late, for not presenting their cases in, in a proper way. So let's start by do, talking about this professionalism aspect of this. And in the text part, you have some explanations like professionalism, um, reliability and accountability, three pillars of the, the evaluation part of this. But let's talk about why did this come to to my mind when preparing this course for you to, to get to know the system. Why? Because uh, during residency or, or when, when teaching residents, I see many things that are unprofessional and I have to talk about that with them, with the evaluators, with um, at the end of the year when we talk about what happened through the year um, on their performance. So some residents do the bare minimum, meaning that sometimes they they just do what is required, but they don't look into maybe finding out if this patient has uh, housing problems, if this patient has um, food insecurity, or if he has an appointment ready for follow up when he leaves the hospital. So many patients, many residents um, do that, and I think that is a lack of interest on on what's going to happen to this patient. So if, if that's the case, if you have a patient like this, you should try to look into what's going to happen with this patient when they leave the hospital. For example, that's one thing on doing the bare minimum or doing taking the extra mile for a patient. Um, only knowing about your patients. So let's say me as a as an attending, supervising attending, I come to to the hospital at 5 p.m. and there's only one resident in in the resident's lounge and I ask, hey, how is this patient doing? The wrong response is, oh, I don't know, it's not my patient. The right response is you pull out your, your sign out list or sign out paper and say, oh, that patient belongs to, to my partner, Dr. Munoz. And he said that he was admitted for CHF and he's currently on Lasix, he's improved on his symptoms. And the next thing that he has pending is to repeat a BNP level tomorrow. So that is the appropriate response. And that is what we expect from you. And American residents know that. So you now know about this. Every patient in this service is your patient or you should be aware of them. Especially if you are the one on the late call, meaning that the if the team is divided in two groups of residents, maybe the the initial one of the groups goes home early or has outpatient clinic scheduled that day, so only the late call residents stay in the hospital. They sh they should know about all the patients. Okay, next one, not looking up for others. Uh, let's say a resident has uh, a kid and the babysitter wasn't going to make it on time at his house. So he called you and said, hey, I'm gonna be late 30 minutes. Could you see two of my patients so I can, I can make it for rounds? And you should say, you should first understand that this is a common situation. This is something that can happen, we're humans. And next you should be like, yes, I will do it. And what will happen is that this resident will praise you on the evaluation forms. And when you present to the attendants in the table, you will say, hey, uh, by the way, I had to take two patients for, for Dr. Munoz because he was late. 
uh, and he informed me informed me earlier and so I, I went to see two patients for him and your attending will be impressed and this is something that can happen because why we're humans, things can happen. Um, residency is not a protected bubble from things that could happen in, in life. So if the case comes that something like that is asked, look up for others, look up for them. If, if a patient, um, I don't know, if a nurse is asking you, hey, Dr. Munoz, um, I have a patient of Dr. McGuinness and she's not in the hospital, but could you, I don't know, order home health for this patient to go home today? She couldn't order it today. Um, why not? You could enter the patient's chart, order home health, and discharge the patient. See, looking up for others, um, doing favors to others. Okay. Um, also, let's say this is important too, because American residents do it all the time. Do uh, when when we talk about looking up for others, for example, this is a, this is a good good case scenario. Let's say um, there's four is it four p.m. and there is a rapid response call, and so Dr. McGuinness is tied with a patient on the ER, and she tells you, Hey Munoz, could you go see that rapid response? Many residents that do the bare minimum say, uh, no, no, it's your patient. You go, you go take care of your mess. And no, that's not the response we're looking for. The response is, sure, Dr. McGuinness, I will go and see that patient right away. Uh, you know, you, you finish your patient there. I, I'm gonna help you out. That's the, the right behavior to have. And again, that will come on your evaluation form. And the other one is poor preparation or anticipation for patient needs. And we, we talk about this a little bit, but um, remember patients when they are discharged, especially the uh, marginalized patients or patients with uh, low income, they, they have needs, they, they, they need housing. And if you know about their, their need for housing, maybe you can arrange for this patient to go transition to a skilled nursing home first before going um, to his previous living if there is a need for for physical therapy, for wound care, and you can you can contact him with local shelters. But if you didn't know that this patient needs help with housing, how are you gonna contact him with, put him in contact with local shelters or talk to a social worker to do that for you? If you didn't know, if you didn't ask. And then when we present, you present me a patient in morning rounds and I said, okay, so this patient is living today. Where is he living? He's homeless. And you will be like, uh, he's living back to the streets? No. I'm, sometimes it happens, but that's not the right answer. That's not the compassionate answer. The compassionate answer is for you to say, I look into his housing situation and we put him in contact with the social worker who will give him a list of local shelters. Or because of his need for daily wound care, we will transition him into a local SNF, uh, skill nursing facility. Okay, and next problem that we have seen is passive, passivity of learning. Is the resident that's never volunteering to do um, a little teaching session in morning rounds, like let's say, um, let's talk about uh, congestive heart failure updates and you prepare a little five minutes or 10 minutes uh, presentation for all your residents during morning rounds. Um, or you don't volunteer to create a poster presentation about an interesting case that came during the rotation. And next problem is the displays superiority or seems unapproachable. Always, always remember that you should be easy to reach, you should be a helping hand to others, and that means being approachable. You shouldn't be seen as, oh, I'm afraid of asking that resident, or I don't think he would be willing to help me because that comes also on your evaluation. Co-residents, medical students should see you not only as a role model, but as a person that they can rely for help, and a person that they can ask anything. We, we are a team. That's the meaning of being a team. And the next problem, and we're gonna finish with this, is uh, tardiness, tardiness. And coming to work late uh, in a recurring base without uh, a reasonable explanation. 
and thinking that this is okay. It's not okay. You should be the first one to come to the hospital and the last one to leave. And why? Because uh, residency is a time for you to learn, a, a time to do things. And believe me, um, as a resident, you don't want to, to have a problem in the professional aspect because it is one of the problems that put you into remediation. And unfortunately, uh, recent, recent, recent studies, recent publications um, reflect that international medical graduates that haven't been a culture to the healthcare system in America fall into remediation more often than American residents. So hopefully this initial part gave you some insight on this, um, this professionalism aspect of residency and let's continue to move into the next episodes.